Hello, thank you for viewing our video abstract, SARS-CoV-2 cases reported on international arriving and domestic flights, United States, January 2020 to December 2021, published in the American Journal of Public Health. My name is Lee Ellen Preston, and I will be presenting this information on behalf of the investigation team, who are all members of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC's, COVID-19 Ports of Entry Team in Atlanta, Georgia, during the first two years of the pandemic. The authors have no conflicts of interest to disclose. Before I begin, here are a few nomenclature differences between this presentation and the manuscript it's based on. As part of CDC's reorganization, our division, branch, and other names have changed to better reflect our mission. You'll see that our quarantine stations have been renamed as Port Health Stations, but their mission and the audiences they serve have not changed. I'll now discuss some background which led us to this project. Transmission of Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, or SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, has been associated with travel and can be reduced with prevention strategies such as mask wearing. CDC operates 20 port health stations at U.S. ports of entry with high volumes of arriving international travelers. In addition to other public health response duties, personnel at these stations collect information on ill travelers reported from public health partners such as state or local health departments, travel industry partners, or other federal partners. To facilitate public health follow-up, the information reported to the stations is recorded in an electronic record-keeping system, the Port Health Activity Reporting System, or FARS. Now, I'll address our project's objectives. Our objective in undertaking this project was to describe the trends in the number of air travelers categorized as infectious with severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, in the context of the total U.S. COVID-19 vaccinations administered and overall case counts of SARS-CoV-2 in the United States. Let's now discuss the project's methods. We searched FARS for travelers with inbound international or domestic air travel. A positive SARS-CoV-2 test result by nucleic acid amplification or antigen test, referred to as a viral test here, and a surveillance categorization of SARS-CoV-2 infection reported during January 2020 to December 2021. Data on travel volume was provided by the U.S. Customs and Border Protection via the CDC's Office of Data Analytics and Technology. Data on overall U.S. COVID-19 case counts and vaccinations administered was obtained through the CDC's COVID Data Tracker. Travelers were categorized as infectious during travel if they had a laboratory-confirmed SARS-CoV-2 infection by viral test and their flight arrival occurred during their infectious period. Travelers were further subcategorized as symptomatic, meaning they had COVID-19 compatible symptoms, or asymptomatic, meaning they had no reported COVID-19 compatible symptoms. Traveler infectious periods were determined based on CDC's quarantine and isolation guidance during the analysis period, though CDC guidance has since been updated. For symptomatic travelers, the infectious period was defined as beginning two days before symptom onset or initial positive viral test, whichever was earlier, until 10 days after symptom onset or initial positive test. For asymptomatic travelers, the infectious period was defined as beginning two days before the initial positive viral test until 10 days after the initial positive viral test. Here are our results. During January 2020 through December 2021, 80,715 persons infectious with SARS-CoV-2 were reported to the CDC as having traveled on 125,135 domestic and 14,678 inbound international flights. Of the infectious travelers, 47% identified as female, 44% identified as male, and gender was not specified for the remaining 9%. The mean age of infectious travelers was 38.5 years. 84% of the infectious travelers reported at least one symptom. 10% were reported to be asymptomatic and 6% were missing information about symptoms. 
Of symptomatic travelers, 63% had a symptom onset date after the flight arrival date, meaning they were infectious on the flight, but not symptomatic on the flight. Shown here are the total number of infectious travelers along with the overall number of U.S. case counts over time. The number of infectious travelers mostly reflected overall U.S. cases, which can be seen in the graph here. Also seen in the graph is an arrow that indicates orders issued in early 2021 by CDC that were aimed at reducing the number of people infected with SARS-CoV-2 entering the United States. The first order required pre-departure testing of all air passengers for SARS-CoV-2 or documentation they had recovered from COVID-19. The second required mask wearing on public transportation into, within, or leaving the United States and at U.S. transportation hubs. In the months following the issuance of these orders, there was a drop in the number of infectious travelers and U.S. cases. Numbers of infectious travelers and new SARS-CoV-2 cases rebounded during the summer months of 2021, coinciding with the increased number of U.S. cases likely due to the Delta variant. Here we have the number of infectious travelers graphed along with the overall U.S. cases, overall travel volume, and total vaccinations administered. In March and April of 2021, after the drop in infectious travelers and overall monthly U.S. cases in the previous month, Infectious travelers and U.S. cases both began to rise again as travel volume increased. In July of 2021, when overall travel volume peaked, the numbers of infectious travelers and new U.S. cases also rose, peaking in August of 2021. And here are our conclusions. Most of the travelers in the analysis were asymptomatic during travel and therefore likely unknowingly traveled while infectious. During periods of high community transmission, it is important for travelers, especially those at higher risk of severe disease, to stay up to date with COVID-19 vaccinations and consider wearing a high quality mask to decrease the risk of transmission. Thank you so much for your interest in our work. We hope it will help inform future public health response to respiratory viruses in air travel. You can access the full article on the AJPH website.